Greetings, Stardust Babe, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hello for the first time. If you've been here before, welcome back. I am doing a pick a pile reading today, focusing on da -da 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 -da, shadow work. So uh, I want you to look at each of these cards and pick which one resonates with you. Pile number one, two, three, and four. Now what's unique about my pick a piles is two things. First off, inside each of these little cards is the word either mind, body, soul, cake, aka money, and love. Now I have no idea which card is which right now, so that is ultimately going to guide the overall message from spirit, energy, source, God, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then the second unique thing is that I also have chosen a pile. So if you and I chose the same pile, then you and I have something in common right now between the two of us, which I think is going to be fun for me as a reader to resonate with you as the viewer. So without further ado, pile number one is the riddle. Beautiful. Now, unlike other readers, I'm not going to be reading from the guidebook. So this is an intuitive reading. I want you to take what you can from this and me to take what I can from it. Pile number two is the shadow, very on point for shadow work. Pile number three is the one, the Neo. And pile number four, eek, eek a mouse, is the judge. I'm not sure what two of these stones are. This one I know is citrine and this one is rose quartz. This might be amethyst and this might be jasper or jade. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I'm not that boned up on my crystal work. All right, take a beat. Look at the cards, look at the stones, see what resonates with you. And when you're ready, continue on to your pile. Hello there, pile number ones. You chose the riddle and or the citrine and or this one card over here. So let's set this to the side. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna organize all of this. And let's see what Spirit wants to talk to you about today regarding your shadow work. Ooh, body. All right, I love this because the colors match as well. They've got a little bit of brown, lots of black in there. Cool, 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 cool. I love when spirit works itself out. Okay, let's get started with your oracle cards first and foremost. Also, fair warning, I hit my camera stand a lot. So um, prepare to get nauseous. <laughs> All right, first up we have Imagine. Ooh, that's a pretty one. That's a pretty one. Then we have Call of the Muse. Look at that body. That's looking like a dance card and a body focus card if I've ever seen it. Then we have You're Not For Everyone. Embrace your weirdness, face your north. Sorry, face your true north. <laughs> Another body card too. Two, this is now three individuals who are kind of calling to spirit to do something that feels unique for you. Since this is a shadow work reading, I'm thinking right off the bat that you have a unique path for healing your body that you maybe haven't been pursuing, but that has to do with a lot of physicality and maybe free spirited dance moves and also spirituality, which is interesting. The final card you have, oh, I love this for body is play. Beloved one, it's time to set aside work for a while. Don't worry, we will oversee your responsibilities to their completion. Playfulness, gaiety, and laughter will lift your energy so that you'll return to work with a renewed perspective and heightened energy. I love this. So it does, that's kind of what the vibe is that I was getting is that whatever unique thing that you are supposed to be doing for your body to heal your shadow work, it comes down to playfulness rather than uh, specific diligence, you know, you're probably not the group that should be doing HIIT workouts or cardio regimes or going to the gym three days, five days a week on a schedule. If that's what you've been doing, then the shadow work for your body is to figure out the riddle of listening to spirit and having playfulness guide your physicality forward. And I know that can be really difficult, especially if you want to lose weight or you want to get toned or you have all these body goals for yourself. It can be really hard to let loose and let love and just pursue playfulness and trust that it's going to give you the outcome you're looking for. But I want you to keep in mind children, right? Children have boundless energy. And for the most part, as long as they're given the space to explore and exert that energy they seem to be in really good shape more often than not yes there are like 
overweight children in the world for sure. Um, but those children usually aren't, again, given that space to exert that energy. Usually they are in a lazy environment or, you know, any number. And we're not talking about health dilemmas at this point. Okay. I'm not, I'm not talking like that. And I'm not um, an inconsiderate person who wouldn't take that into account. What I'm talking about though, is that the majority of children, when they're just given the space to just be playful and have fun, they burn off that energy, which is really, really just calories in calories out, right? Kids are just boundless energy. So you, for your shadow work, are being told to get back into whatever callings are pulling to you, whether it is literally playing in a playground or playing with Play-Doh or bouncing around and dancing, whatever it is. And that's going to help with whatever shadow work you have going on with your body, which also makes me think that you're probably retaining trauma in the body, negativity in the body, and your imagination needs to coincide with your playfulness to be able to work through that. I'm taking that your shadow work is really body focused right now because you've probably conquered other parts of your shadow work, like your mindset and your heart space and your root chakra and stuff like that. And now it's down to you reconnecting with your body. And that is probably stunting your imagination a little bit because you're being too rigid with it. So listen to what turns you on, call of the muse. Listen to that thing that's like, oh, that would be really fun to do every day and just like enjoy myself and start doing it. And recognize this embrace your weirdness, face your true north. There's something quirky about you as well with your body work that not everybody agrees with. You might have friends who are like, oh, you need to be fasting or intermittent fasting or, oh, you need to be checking your macros or, or you need to be going to the gym. You need to work out five days a week. And you're probably here like, nah, boo, I can just dance my butt off and have breakfast that's like pancakes and just like enjoy my life. And that's probably true for you. Uniquely so, because even though it's not the traditional route, it is healing something internally on a shadow level that ultimately is going to free your spirit and get you to a healthy place. Okay, let's see what your tarot cards are. We have the Emperor. Oh, I love that for the imagined space. Ooh, we have the High Priestess, Call of the Muse. Yes, honey. We have Three of Pentacles. You're not for everyone. Perfect card. And then we have Six of Swords, play. Yes, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So, Let's start over here with the emperor. Your imagination is being stifled by the fact that you have been doing things too diligently for your body. You might be following a routine right now, or you might be resisting a routine that you think you need to be setting for yourself. I fall into this trap all the time. This is not the pile I chose, but I fall into the trap of like, oh, I've gained weight. My muscles are flabby. I need to get back to working out. And my head immediately goes to, okay, hit workouts five days a week, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. These are the things I need to follow. And I immediately hate it. I disconnect. I, I procrastinate pursuing it. Like it's the worst thing I could put myself into. So I kind of wish I had chosen this pile because that's the problem is when I get too diligent and too masculine with the things I think I should pursue for my body, it throws off my imagination. It really disconnects me from my spiritual side as well. And so that's why you're being asked to sink into this high priestess mode where you listen to call of the muse. Now, if you don't know about muses from back in ancient times, muses typically were kind of similar to oracles in the sense that they were strictly used and perceived by society as inspiration for people. And the word inspiration from the Greeks comes from the concept that spirit is within you and working through you. You didn't just create the Last Supper as Leonardo da Vinci. You were channeling spirit and that's what created it. You as yourself as a human are just a human and good luck using a paintbrush. But you with spirit inside of you, that is what is creating the Last Supper. So you're being called to silence the diligence. And look at the emperor looking over at her, right? He's aware of the fact that, okay, I need to like pass the torch to this one because I've gone as far as I can in this chess match and I'm not really feeling it anymore. You need to listen to your intuition and really let spirit take over and guide your heart space forward because then we go into this section right here, you're not for everyone. And in that regard, not everyone is for you as well. It's a two-way street, right? And so you're going to find that your circle narrows down significantly to perhaps two more people, you and two other people who really resonate with your weirdness, embrace your weirdness with the part of you that is just like a quirky turkey, but somehow makes it work. And I'm hearing embodiment practice. You're maybe not even supposed to do physicality like exercise. It's supposed to be embodiment, this playfulness, this fun, this loving side of you. And that really comes down to this last section. 
this is the one that really clicked it into place for me personally. You're moving on from trauma to calmer waters. And this still looks, ooh, excuse me, this still looks a little rough, rough waters, but really what this card is saying is that the past, the darkness, the depression is behind her and she's now coming forward to calmer spaces. She's about to hit a shoreline where she can get off this rocky water and move forward. She's got her bag of stuff of what really matters to her, the last little bits of her life that are important, and she's ready to move into a safe space. And what is that safe space? Playfulness. You're no longer in a space where you have to be super diligent, super hardcore, super masculine about your life. You can let go, let love, and just pursue what makes you happy, what really resonates with you. Okay, so the final part of my pick a piles is that I do four additional tarot cards of clarifying this whole spread. And then we'll do four final cards of if you take this feedback, what is the after effect? What is the outcome for you? So let's get down. Let's get down, spirit. I want four more cards to clarify this spread. My spirit team, my soul fam, my feisty unicorns, my angel babies. Four more cards to clarify this spread. Please and thank you whenever you're ready. I am ready to receive. Ah, that wasn't it. <laughs> if you're new to my channel, I wait until I get one card stuck in my right hand while I'm shuffling, and that is my sign to go. I'm not shuffling on camera, though, because it's just, I, don't, I only have so much space. Okay, so here we have the moon. And that's exactly what I'm talking about with this imagine and your masculine. Your masculine energy is shutting you down, and it's making it so you're a little disconnected from your intuition. It says dreams, intuition, shadow. Ha, huh, shadow work, hello. And so what you're finding out here is that your shadow work is largely attributed to your body right now. Shadow work is all encompassing, right? It covers so many parts of your life. But right now for you, pile number one, you need to focus on your embodiment practice. You need to get up and wiggle and shake it out, literally. You need to find what inspires you and connect with that. And I'm seeing some dance and playfulness, dance and playfulness. And in between that is this weirdness where maybe you're screaming up at the heavens. That's fine too, babe. You do you. Then we have the five of swords, upheaval, conflict, loss. I'm thinking that this comes from a space where you have experienced loss and it's made you kind of look down at your your intuition with a little bit of sadness, a little bit of not not full-blown depression because she see, still seems like capable of dealing with it enough. But there is this like this letting go and this walking away from things. So I feel like part of this comes from the space where you were called to rise to the occasion on something. You were called to walk away from something that really made you feel like attacked and you lost something, whether they're friends or family or co concepts, ideas, whatever it is. You walked away from that. You trusted your intuition and you took a walk. And in doing so, it probably caused some things like upheaval in your routines which then caused inflammation in your body, which then caused you to maybe binge food and alcohol or Netflix or whatever and slowly start disconnecting from your physical space. And here's what I know about shadow work and, and embodiment practices because I'm big into self-therapy. You'll learn that about me as well if you stick with this channel. What I know is this. Humans are really good at connecting to one or the other. We either connect to our physicality really well or we connect to our spiritual self really well. Well, and then there's a third option of where you disconnect from either of those or both of them. But if you're connecting to something, usually humans fall in the track of one or the other. And that's where embodiment practice comes in because you can be physical all day long and be like really fit, really great, really flexible and feeling good about yourself and still not connect to that spiritual side. Typically though, the first kind of signs of spiritual awakening when you start to actually pursue it most people I've personally found disconnect from the physicality and focus on the spiritual side. And that's fantastic in the sense that it's part of the journey and you have to go through these things. There's no shame in this game, but eventually you have to reconnect to your vessel because if you're not in tune with the ship that you are supposed to be steering, you're going to crash into something, right? You're going to you're going to sink your ship. And your body is that vessel. Your body is the ship that you are in charge as a spirit for driving forward. So, at some point in that journey, 
once you get to having some grasp of your emotional spiritual self you have to reconnect with the physical part and that's embodiment practice embodiment is not just like oh i dance around my living room and i'm feeling my body no 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 no. embodiment is when you take that spiritual side and you connect that to your physical side and together they're both having an experience intertwined and that gets that gets more fun that really elevates your spiritual self and it elevates well, it elevates your spiritual self and it enhances, I would say. It enhances your physical self, right? Okay. Third card is Four of Cups. Yearning, disillusion, and boredom. That is why you're being told that you're not for everybody. Look at this woman being... Ah, focus. Focus, my dear. Look at this woman being offered these cups and thinking, ah, it's not for me. I'm bored with this. I want something more. There's got to be something else out there. And that's because you know you're not for everyone and the people you're connecting with probably aren't the best for you. You need to stop trying to blend in with the whole group and trust that this riddle of your physicality, this, this shadow that you find yourself in right now very much probably feels like a riddle. And riddles should be challenging to solve unless you're doing like a basic riddle. But if you're doing like a really challenging one as an adult, they should be difficult to resolve. And you feel like you're in that space right now. Like, oh, I've done all this shadow work. I've moved past all this upheaval and loss. I've come to a place where I know I deserve better and I'm looking out into the future for it, but it hasn't happened yet. That's part of the riddle is you're stumped right now with your embodiment practice is what I'm getting. And the final, oh, this is perfect. The final card is 10 of cups. Prosperity, joy, family, contentment. That's perfect because you've got play with a child here bouncing on lily pads. And with this six of swords, it's and matched with this ten of cups. Part of me, a huge part of me, thinks that a lot of your embodiment practice stems from childhood issues, trauma. If you want to say it's trauma, but if it doesn't feel like it's that traumatic, it's just like shadow stuff from your childhood. That's fine too. To each their own. To all the same. So whatever it is, it does stem from childhood, though. There are patterns of behavior that you learned in your childhood that are directly affecting, first off, that you're moving on from, that you're aware of now, and you're trying to heal those patterns. But second, part of healing that is going back to playfulness. You need to get back in touch with your inner child and be like, okay, what can we do today that is active? Because that child in this card is not just sitting there playing with Legos or, you know, sitting on her butt playing with Play-Doh. She's actively jumping around and bouncing. And that's part of the embodiment practice too. It's not enough to be like, oh, well, my inner child loved playing video games. No, 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 no. Your inner child is young. That's the inner child I'm talking about. She, he, very playful, off in a playground, running around in circles, like actively enjoying the physical vessel they were born into. So, Pile number one, if you take this feedback and you run with it, where do you find yourself after the fact? I'm using the after tarot for this, which as a short example is, you know, the full card where the person is about to walk off the cliff and you don't know where they're going to land. This one is after they've walked off the cliff, what that looks like. So if you take this feedback, where are you going to find yourself? Whenever you are ready, my feisty unicorns, my spirit babies, give it to me, babies. Ah, cards be jumping. I do not read. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, everyone. I don't read cards that bounce out. Instead, I take that as spirit helping me shuffle because then I have to put those cards back into a new part of the deck. So thank you, spirit team, for helping me shuffle this deck. Whenever you're ready, I am ready for you. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so if you take this feedback and if you roll with this, come on. It's so bad. Ah, there we go. You're going to see that you're starting to look around and see who the things and people are. Specifically, I'm seeing people who do not resonate with you and who shut down your dreams and visions for your future. Because that's part of the shadow work is that there are actively people in your life who do not agree with your choices, who maybe think you're going about this the wrong way, who maybe think you're making things up or that you're delusional or that you know, it comes, what comes to my mind is my own family that says, oh, Tiffany, your childhood wasn't that bad. And these are the same people who have openly admitted to me that my childhood was a mess. They know my, my dad was abusive. They know my mom was abusive. They know my brother was abusive. They know everything. But these same people, my mom, my dad, and my brother will at any given time say, oh, it wasn't that bad. You're crazy. I don't know. Someone else hit you. It surely wasn't me. And that doesn't have to resonate with you. I'm not saying that your shit was as bad as my shit or that your shit was like 
not as bad as my shit, whatever. My point is that there are actively people around you that you, you're gonna look down at after you do this embodiment practice, you're gonna release some tension in your body that releases some hormones, releases some energy, and you're finally gonna look down and be like, no, you know what? I know exactly who hit me on the head with this fucking wand. I know who you are, I see you now. <laughs> oh, and then we have the world. This is what you want. God, there we go. This is what you want to be right with the high priestess and call of the muse. Someone has caused conflict and upheaval and loss and you took that on and started moving forward. The call of the muse was like, you deserve better, honey. You need to figure your shit out because it's no longer about you deserve better. Shadow work is like, yeah, I deserve better, but also I need to take responsibility for what I am replicating in my life based on what I went through. And so you did that. You started looking at all these pain points in your life and now you're going to spiritually elevate. That's a beautiful card to have right there. Then we have the two of pentacles. This means a fresh start in your physical, your manifestations, your material realm, and you're welcoming in people who genuinely want to meet, connect, and work with you. That's a fantastic card to have here, especially when you have the three of pentacles below that. And this is the call, embrace your weirdness, the call of your weirdness. You've looked around and you're like, I don't like the things that I've got coming towards me. I want to change that. I want to shift that. And when you do, suddenly, bam, people start coming forward who want to work with you, who want to buy your services, who want to buy into your life. And then finally, we have the king of swords. I love this for you right here because it means that you take that emperor energy, that diligence that you're repeating those old patterns and you suddenly say, you know what? Ah, see, camera bump, it's gonna happen. <laughs> you suddenly see that with playfulness, you can move on from these childhood wounds. You can face that stuff and now your masculine side reparents you and start saying, okay, here's how we move forward from here. We're gonna do our due diligence. We're gonna follow this practice with conviction. Masculine energy is not a negative when applied to feminine embodiment practices because the masculine side is the diligent disciplined side. And you want to be disciplined with your shadow work. That's really important for shadow work. So it's great to have a masculine energy card pop up, especially the king of swords who is very pragmatic about things. Once he knows the proper way to do something, he shows out for that every single time shows up and shows out for that without being emotional about it. He just says, oh, this is just logical. So when you take this on and start healing this childhood wounds of yours and start putting that into an embodiment practice, the diligent, pragmatic, disciplined part of your brain, the masculine energy is suddenly gonna be like, oh yeah, that's the right way to do that. We are supposed to have play recess two times a day. Duh, we are supposed to take nap time, duh. And it's just gonna become like, click, that makes sense. All right, pile number one, I hope this resonates with you. If there's anything I said or did or anything you experienced in this reading that was just a synchronistic click for you, please put it in the comments below so that we can all enjoy the magnificence that is spiritual connectivity. Until next time, my friends, love and bear hugs. Hello, my pile number twos. You chose the shadow and possibly the amethyst card or stone. I don't really know what this is, but whatever. Whatever, let's see what spirit wants to talk to you about today. Ooh, cake. So whatever journey you are on for your shadow work, it has to do with money, 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 your finances. And specifically for me, if you're new to my channel, cake is passionpreneurship. So it is a project that you love at your core that you want to also make money off of. You want to make a career off of something that you just love. And if you're not currently doing that right now, then this reading is going to tell you that. If you are currently doing it, this reading will address that. Either way, the fact that you have the shadow with it tells me right off the bat that you maybe don't know how to go about dealing with this. This is like a deep shadow. We're talking shadow work and you have the shadow and you chose cake. I mean, I can only imagine you probably chose the shadow of like, yeah, let's be real direct about it. <laughs> let's let's talk like point blank what I'm struggling with right now. So I hope this resonates with you right off the bat, the card that spirit ultimately wants to talk to you about. So let's get down to it. First off, you have never ending story. Oh no. Oh, pile number two. Are you going about your passionpreneurship projects, your finances in a cyclical loop that drains you, that you don't enjoy? that ultimately makes you bombed out. Oh dear, 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 dear. Then we have into me I see. Interesting. I think you know 
I think you know there's something internally that you want to translate into a business or a profitable something or other, and you're probably struggling with um, self-confidence, self-worth, trust issues. Earth school, life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. I think you're realizing you're a spirit that is here on this planet as a student, and perhaps you want to become like, for lack of a better word, a teacher's assistant or a professor. A te like you want to start helping people who are also students. You don't just want to like graduate with your master's and go run the world. You want to graduate with a master's and come back to the university and help fellow students that you resonate with to elevate up. And that comes from a space of you recognize you're this, this soul, but you're stuck in this never ending story loop. Interesting. And then we have daydream. You will more easily hear and receive our messages if you daydream regularly. Relax and open your mind to receiving without directing your thoughts. Just notice any feelings, visions, or ideas as if you were watching a movie. This is the seat of creativity. Okay. 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 I get the feeling that you're putting too much stress on yourself to figure this out. And that happens with passionpreneurship. When we get in a space where we're like, I know I'm being called to do this thing, but how can I make a living off of it at the same time? If I can't make a living off of it, then I can't really pursue it. You're in the space of figuring it out. And there's a lot of value you can add to the world and your community at large by pursuing it now, even though you can't really see how it's going to work out. I get the feeling that some of you are kind of philosophers. You're into theoretics. And daydreaming is where you come up with a lot of your best ideas. So don't, don't neglect that. You need to be daydreaming. All right. We have the four of cups, never ending story. Look at her. She is in a never ending story. She's like, oh, this again, this isn't what I want. Interesting. Then you have the seven of pentacles into me. I see this is beautiful because that is kind of what this, this emulates, right? That if this tree could talk, this guy can't really see the outside, the external world can't really see what you're cultivating here but you as the tree are like look at all these like pentacle potatoes I got growing down here I know what I got going on even if you don't quite see it just yet oh then we have the ten of cups earth school calling in your tribe mm, beautiful and then we have the hanged man this is perfect for daydreaming you really need to sit in a space where you allow yourself to be inspired and I said it in the last uh reading pile number one I say this often, actually, if you're new to my channel, get ready for this because I say it all the time. I think it's so fascinating that the root of the Greek word inspiration or inspiration is a Greek word, inspire. And what it means is that spirit has channeled through you to create the artwork that you create or the masterpiece or the mathematics or whatever it is. So I use Leonardo da Vinci as an example frequently. He just pops into my head. It's not that Leonardo da Vinci created The Last Supper. It's that spirit was channeled through him to create it. So we as humans can know how to use a paintbrush, but it's really spirit channeling through us that creates that magnificence, right? We are just the vessel. And I kind of see it as like AI, right? AI by itself is not creating like the image of a unicorn ballet dancing through the cosmos with a flying spaghetti monster as its audience. You know what I mean? Like you have to put that in and ask it to create that image. And so that's kind of the dynamic with spirit and humans is we are just existing and then we get inspired. We catch wind. Spirit just kind of flows through us in a second. We're like, oh my God, I could do that for my life. I could do this right now. Oh my God, interesting. So that's what I'm seeing for someone here is this never ending story seems to be a cycle of... I get that it's you not really knowing how or trusting that this experience you're having of love for all, all for love, this oneness, this earth school, life lesson, soul growth space. I'm getting the feeling that you don't really know how to translate that into a profitable business. You have this concept, you daydream about it, you're seeing the math come together, but you're stuck in this loop of she's looking back to the past like well, that's just all I know. That's all I can fathom creating. I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to do anything differently. And that can be a very frustrating place to be when you're sitting there knowing that you have something to offer the world, but not knowing how to go about doing it. And we are talking shadow work here. So keep in mind that this is something that is plaguing 
your ego and it's also something that plagues your soul in the sense that you're supposed to be doing this. Shadow work is the parts of ourselves that we're supposed to come to terms with. And if we don't find out how to come to terms with it, we just keep repeating that karmic wheel over and over and over and over and over again. This is a life lesson for you that you're supposed to see that you don't have to repeat the never ending story of your life. There is a different way to go about this and you have to look within. Into me, I see you really have to look within and see what your roots are. What are the root pentacles, the gems that you've got from what you've been through that you can provide the earth school that we're all in right now, the collective and say, hey, I know how to deal with these things. I've actually cultivated potatoes on Mars from my own shit. <laughs> ah, if you've ever seen the Martian, you get that. And part of it right now is you're not in a phase. It doesn't look like you're in a phase of being ready to launch, whatever this is. It looks like you're still in the daydreaming phase and you're still in that kind of limbo. You feel a little physically paralyzed with I don't uh, analysis paralysis. You don't really know what to do for this. Do I start an Instagram account? Do I create a website? Do I create a product? Do I even have a product idea in mind? You don't have any of that figured out yet from what I'm seeing. Instead, you're sitting here reflecting all this and daydreaming. Is it even possible to start this? Do I even have anything tangible to create? And what's interesting is that your reading starts off with this creature looking this way and it ends with this angel looking that way. And so you're, you're what's this called? What, what is this called? Compressing? You're compressing, condensing, um, consolidating. I'm thinking like a diamond pressure. There's pressure on both ends of you being frustrated with where you've come from and the cycle that you've been repeating and the way that you've been living your life and feeling hopeful about this future and feeling like you're in tune with it, angelically in tune. It's interesting that this is an angel up top. And then we've got this inspired this bright glowing yellow orb is inspiration mental inspiration that comes from beyond comes from spirit comes from god so your future is you see this and you know it comes from this space of i know i could offer the community at large earth humans this healing potion for figuring out how to just burst forth with love the ten of cups is about a union a family children but really, it's about ultimate love. This is the most loving card, family loving card in the deck, as opposed to like the sun card that's self-love. This one is family love. And so something about this is healing the spiritual family or healing your understanding of family, even maybe healing your physical family on earth. But it comes from within. There's something you've taught yourself. You've done some shadow work that has taught yourself something. And now you're just trying to see what is it? What are these gems that I've cultivated for myself? What are these healing moments? And how can I dig those up and share those with people? So you're in the contemplation space right now. And how this relates to your shadow. First off, I love that you have the shadow here because that, that just proves my point. You don't really see it as a whole entity right now. It really just is like a shadowy, dusty reflection, a silhouette in the distance that you can't really grab at, you know? But second off... This being your shadow work, there's something about you that maybe struggles to take up space and be a teacher that maybe doesn't believe that you have this knowledge or that is undermining yourself in some way that either you won't be able to figure out how to translate it into a financially viable product. Because even though cake is about passionpreneurship, it really is also about making a living off of this thing. So it's either that kind of realm or that you think maybe people won't appreciate it. But I don't really feel like that's the majority of you because there is a lot of appreciation happening here. I think you understand that you were sent here to learn some lessons and teach people a different way. You're really just stuck in the space of this phase of I have no idea how to go about doing that. All right, let's get four more cards to clarify this spread for pile number two. Whenever you are ready, my feisty unicorns, my spirit babies. La di da, la di la di da. There we go. Woo, Queen of Wands. Okay, I love this card for you right here. Come on, there we go. It says creativity, leader, focus. This never-ending story that you are stuck 
going through over and over again is self-doubt. You can see that in her head. She's just grabbing her head like, oh, I just don't know. And then here she is, hands on head again. Oh, I just don't know. And so the way forward with that seems to be your creativity. You need to step into a leadership role of being focused on your creativity. You do have something creative. And passionpreneurship with cake is a creative business. It's not something that is just like practical, right? When I talk cake, I'm not talking someone who's like, oh, I'm going to make this one product and manufacture it from a cheap manufacturer and blow it up on Amazon. No, we are not talking about a business that just makes you money for the sake of making money. We're talking about a passionpreneurship project, and that passion is your creativity. So first off, I see that you need to be stepping into whatever that creativity is for you. Then we have the Eight of Swords, Frustration, Anxiety, Trapped. And that's what I'm seeing here. You don't seem to know how to move forward for this. And you keep looking within and you keep like, look at these eyes looking down and his eyes looking down. You keep looking down at the work that you've done and the gems that you have cultivating, but you can't quite see what those are, right? She can't literally see inside her body and he can't literally see through the dirt to see what these gems are. So you're really just stuck in this like, what does this plant have? What's down there? And is that going to be helpful for people? And so it's causing you to go in this cycle of feeling frustrated and anxious and trapped because you really don't know if the idea that you have in mind is going to prosper. Oh, we have two queens here. Then we have the queen of cups, intuition, compassion, creativity. You have creativity twice in both queens. That's freaking magnificent. And for this one, that's what I'm getting is that this earth school, life lesson, soul growth, study, higher learning with the 10 of cups, and you have the queen of cups on top of that. Oh, honey, you have the depth of love and empathy within you. And somehow that is going to be translated for other people in a way that brings you financial stability through a passionpreneurship project. But it starts with you tapping into your intuition, trusting that you are on an earth school right now. If you've been telling yourself that, like, man, I just feel like I'm a spirit inside a human body and I'm just here to learn lessons, you're right. And if you feel like somehow you wanna talk about that narrative to people to help open up other eyeballs to recognizing that they are also in that boat, you're right. And if you feel like the family that you get on earth that you're born into, it has some play into the lessons you're supposed to learn. You're right. And if you feel like the family you formulate beyond your birth family on this planet is meant to help your soul elevate even further and learn more lessons, you're right. You need to trust your intuition. You need to be compassionate towards yourself and others. And you need to find a way to, first off, trust yourself. Second off, trust yourself in pursuing your creativity, whatever that is, whether it's writing philosophy or being a painter, I don't know, but you need to trust yourself in your intuitive creativity. And then you need to burst forth with that compassion for other people because that seems to be the root of what this is. The root of what this woman dives into from the universe in earth school is to heal family values, whatever that is for you. That might not be your birth family. That might be cause creating new families. You might not even have a family at all. You might be like me where you're estranged from your birth family and you do not have a traditional family family on earth right now. I have friends. I have a friend group, but I don't have like a partner right now. We don't have children right now. I don't have any of that right now. So you might not be in this space just yet, or you might not feel like you're in that space just yet, but that doesn't mean that's not what you're here to heal. And you have to acknowledge that and trust that. And finally, you have five of cups, loss, leaving sorrow. That seems to be what this is focused on. This daydream, this hanged man is there is some loss there. You are letting go of what you thought was meant for you. And that is part of this lesson that you are meant to be teaching people is that, look, when we get caught up in our expectations of what we think we're supposed to have, that's what causes severe depression because then we recognize it's not what we're supposed to have or it was never meant for us because what's meant for us never leaves us, right? And um, that causes anxiety, depression, sorrow, loss. But it's a necessity. You are meant to let go of whatever you're... Ooh, <laughs> every pile is going to have one. Every pile is going to have a camera bump by accident. <laughs> you are meant to have this loss. That is part of the lessons you are learning in this lifetime. But it's your job, pile number twos, to figure out how to translate that into lessons for people, into healing past that, into getting over your frustrations, your loss, 
your grief, your sorrow, and to falling back into compassion. She's looking towards this king, queen of cups. Both of these actually have their eyes focused that way. Well, this one's eyes are closed, but her head is focused that way. That you get through loss through compassion. And I think that's something a lot of people don't necessarily have right now is learning that. That is part of shadow work, isn't it? Ooh, honey, whatever business you are supposed to pursue, it directly has to work with helping people work through their shadow work. Absolutely, 100%. That's all that's showing up here. You're supposed to be helping people look within, seek without, and heal the parts of themselves that hold themselves back from receiving true earthbound love. And I say earthbound specifically because cosmic love is for one and all, absolutely. But finding it here in this iteration of human life that can be really difficult. People shut themselves down from it and isolate away from love all the time. All right, so if you take this feedback from Spirit, let's find out where you're going to land. Four more cards, Spirit, to define the after tarot, the afterwards, if pile number two takes in your feedback. I am ready when you are, Spirit. Give it to my babies. Nope, not that one. Ah, there we go. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! You ready for this? You ready for this? Bam! Oh, this is good. This is really good in this space. You want to know why? Most people hate the tower card because it's like, oh my God, mass destruction. Can't do shit about it. But check this bad boy out. Bam. You are super dissatisfied with where you are in your life, with how your cyclical path is going. You know you either need to do more shadow work or that the shadow work you've done is complete and you need to find a way to integrate that into your life, right? And you want to be this powerful leadership creative queen moving forward. You want to take that on. However, if you take this advice, be prepared for your life to change magnificently. Magnificently. Because the tower card means that the foundation this tower was built on is faulty. And that one strike of lightning is enough to take down the entire building. What you've built your life on, the routines, the patterns of behavior, what you're reflecting back on, everything that's causing this four of cups, like longing, sadness of I want something different, this just doesn't feel right, that's all going to come crashing down when you take on this advice. When you finally start acknowledging, okay, I have this business I want to do. Here's an example of how this might play out. If you have an idea of a passionpreneurship project that you want to take on, and if you start practicing taking it seriously, if you start jotting down ideas and you start really piecing together how you would move forward with this, you might suddenly realize one day, I have to quit my job. And in quitting your job, you might realize, well, shit, how am I going to pay my rent and my bills? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And you might have to just pray day and night, every hour on the hour, that God has your back, that spirit is going to prevail, and that someone is going to pay up. And that's going to be stressful as hell. That is a tower moment if ever there was one. But it's not a bad thing in this spread because where you're coming from needs to end so that you can step into this beautiful life you're trying to go towards. Then we have the nine of swords. You're going to go from this trapped, anxious space of like, I don't really know what I have to offer. I can't really see the gems. I just know that I'm growing a healthy plant, but I haven't really jotted down like what all the things are that I'm producing from that plant and it's leaving you frustrated. Wow, you go from being super anxious to being like, I got this, I'm gonna slay that demon. He means nothing to me, suck it. You're gonna slay that demon and then you're gonna sleep well at night. Then you have the emperor. Oh my God, I love this with the queen of cups because you are now, that's the part that's missing. For you that's what I'm seeing is you're in the feminine creative second guessing your shadow self for cake is toxic femininity right now and I don't mean toxic like the worst of the worst feminine but it is second guessing your creative side you're not in touch with that queen part of you you really want to be you have two queens here both of them focus on creativity but you're not in that space. You're being called to be in that space. You know that space is possible for you, but you're not there yet. And so to have the emperor come through as the after, if you take all this advice on and then you pursue it, you're going to have a tower moment, but you're going to start slaying those anxieties. And then you're going to diligently step into the masculine and say, okay, I got this. What I need to do is set up a PayPal link. What I need to do is start a YouTube channel. What I need to do is network, network, network. Like you're going to know the path you need to take forward to actually create what it is you feel inspired to create. Oh, 
and then your final card is the four of wands. I love this because once you have that all figured out, you're going to hit a place where you can celebrate. Everything kind of falls into place for you. The four of wands is usually a union card, and that typically can imply a marriage, a partnership for sure. But in this case, it's not really a marriage. It's more of like just celebrating. You've brought something into this world. It is a stable foundation. It's healthy. It's happy. It's vibrant. I mean, look at these colors being so dark and dismal. This one's even like stepping into the, the ring of fire and just doing it kind of thing. And then you come into this bright, spiritually inspired, lovely space where you've trust your, trusted your intuition and you're actually pursuing the thing that you have been called to pursue. This is going to end in so much beauty. You go from this not stable foundation to this beautiful castle in the background with a sprawling landscape and tons of community members around you who just love what you have to offer. So pile number two, your spirit, your shadow work, your spirit is being called to address a passionpreneurship project. I see that you're not quite in a space where you're ready to take steps forward, but you need to do the due diligence of figuring out exactly what you want to do, how it aligns with your creativity, and then take those steps. And if you follow that, you're going to sink into some masculine and poetic energy where you can actually put into practice everything that you know you're supposed to be doing and you're going to see mad success babies mad success all right that's all i have for you pile number two if there's anything i said or did that resonated or anything that you experienced that clicked with you please leave it in the comments below so that we can all relish in the magnificence that is spiritual connectivity until next time my friends love and bear hugs dun, 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 dun. If you chose this pile, so did I. Welcome pile number threes. You and I have something in common. Let's find out what it is. So this is the one, the Neo, the 30. And that's all I have to say about that. Let's see what Spirit wants to talk to us about today. Pile number threes. Mind. Interesting. Interesting. So we're talking about shadow work, babies. And we're starting off with the mind. Excellent. Let's get down to it. Bam, come to the edge. Ooh, I like that. That blue matches really well with mine. Then we have seeing beyond. Ooh, what a good, 36 and 36. Interesting, interesting. If you're watching this, someone look up what number 36 means in angel numbers, because I have no idea. Then we have double mission, light worker, star seed, serve the world by being you. Oh, 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 I like this. And then we have reward yourself. You've been giving a lot of yourself lately and it's time for you to receive. Make the time to reward yourself in a meaningful way. This balance of giving and receiving is essential to keeping your energy, mood, and motivation at a consistently high level. Excellent. Okay, so what I noticed right off the bat is that this is an inner child card. This is a child angel. And so that reward should come from a space that our inner child would resonate. I don't think it should be something that's like, oh, I'm going to go to a spa day and get a mani-pedi. Unless your inner child, like... I don't know, six-year-old self was like, oh, many petties, then go for it, honey, go for it. But my inner child was more like playing in a playground, running around like a psychopath, <laughs> Play-Doh, like just being a goofball. So for me, that's whatever I resonate with for my own inner child. Anyways, um, this all is related to the mind. And I chose the one because I like the idea of oneness, wholeness, unity, consciousness, that kind of thing. And I've really been struggling lately with, I do tend to see the beyond. So again, because this is a pile that I chose, you're going to hear a lot about from my perspective. I do tend to see beyond to things. I do tend to see things, know things before other people know them. And it's not, I had a friend ask me this the other day. She's like, oh, is it because you're like highly intelligent? And I was like, no, I mean, I am intelligent and whatnot, but I think it's because I'm highly intuitive. I think it's because for the longest time I've detached from the human collective in general. And I've been living such a bizarre life that not many people live. Like I was a digital nomad before that was even a phrase. I was, I packed up my stuff and I moved down to Mexico in 2013 before doing that was even a thing. Before Upwork.com was a website to do freelancing from, I knew it when it was Odesk and Elance.com, two separate websites that were purchased and merged into one. You know what I mean? So like, I'm an OG as a digital nomad. I've been doing this for a long time. And not just that, but I'll say things that people are like, no, that sounds freaking ridiculous. And then years later, it'll happen. Like I got in an argument with my mom once when I was in college being like, ah, oh, marijuana is gonna be legal in my lifetime, followed shortly by mushrooms magic mushrooms and she was like that's fucking ridiculous it wasn't legalized in my time and that's when it was a big thing and I was like mom I hear you 
but you're wrong. And it wasn't a big argument like we were mad at each other. It was just like a back and forth kind of thing. And she was like, okay, Tiffany, whatever. And then here we are, years later, um, marijuana got legalized and shortly thereafter, mushrooms. And it's not like I followed it up by saying like, and then heroin, you know, like I knew it would have a cap at some point. And I also know in the near future, in my lifetime, all drugs will be legalized in the United States of America because don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Uh, so either way, I have this habit of seeing in the beyond and it brings me to this edge that most people don't walk. I walk a life less traveled. And I imagine if you got this, then you do as well, or that you need to, because your mind knows things other people's minds don't know. And that's because you do have a double mission. You're not just supposed to be a light working star seed. You're not just supposed to connect to the cosmos. You're also supposed to serve the world by being and expressing yourself. But right now, you need to reward yourself for the work you've done. I love that it says that because I'm currently putting in a ton of work on being myself, and I imagine you are too. Pile number threes, if you're watching this, please get in the comments and resonate with me because I want to bond with people who are doing the similar journey that I'm on. It doesn't mean we're doing the same business or that we're doing the same kind of shit, but like to be in that space where you're like, yeah, I do see shit people don't see, and I do walk a really weird life, and I am going to serve the world and be a light working star seed. That deserves the reward of community. And that's really what my child, my inner child was, is I love to just like hang out with people. It wasn't until I was middle school, high school that I started really distancing and isolating myself. But when I was like really young, I loved to just socialize. I'd wake up on the weekends and get my rollerblades on. I was like, where are my friends at? I'm going to go run around the neighborhood or I guess skate around the neighborhood. All right. So next we have the devil. Ooh, hoo, hoo. underneath come to the edge and look at him. He's like, come hither, baby. Come hither. Woo. And then we have seeing beyond. Look how celebratory she is. She is just so excited that she sees things that other people don't see. Well, oh, double mission. Serve the world by being you. And there's a freaking globe inside the pregnant lady, the empress. And then we have three of wands. This is great for rewarding yourself because really the three of wands is like, I know I have something here and I'm looking beyond waiting for my ships to come in. I'm waiting for something to come for me. But in this deck, she's got a surfboard and she's like, all right. I'm going to go play. And I used to surf as a kid. So that's hilarious for me. I'm not in a place where I could surf right now. I'm currently staying in France, even though I live down in Mexico. Um, so I'm not in a place where I want to go surfing at this point in time. Uh, but I do miss the ocean. And a big part of this reward for me is to go back to Mexico in the next about a month, about a month and a half. I'm heading back to Mexico and I just cannot wait to sink my feet into some sand and to eat my favorite tacos and to just be back home. Mexico has been home for me for the last 11 years. So I really like, I can't wait to take a deep breath of that oceanic air and be like, mangoes. <laughs> okay. So file number three, our shadow work right now is that we know intuitively on our mind that there is one consciousness, that we are unity consciousness. We know inherently our third eye is awake. We know things people don't know, and it tends to take us to a place where we live on the edge. And that living on the edge, ugh, camera bumps. Every single pile so far has had a random camera bump, and the, so that's yours, pile three. We know living on the edge is this temptatious kind of thing. It's, it's a temptation from the beyond. And sometimes it makes us feel like, at least for me, I live like a pirate, a modern day pirate. And I say that like, not like I steal and rob from people. I'm not a swashbuckling douchebag, but like I am a bit of an anarchist. I don't follow the rules when I feel like those rules are biased and when they're harming people, when they're unfair. I very much am strong moral guidance. And what I mean by that is I have a strong moral compass. I don't know why I said it in the weird way that I did, but I mean, I have a strong moral compass. And so when I know something's not right, I go against it and I do the thing that I know is right. When I was growing up, obviously in America, my history classes talked a lot about the slave trade. We had multiple slave trades. Um, and part of what resonated with me was at the same time I was taking a American politics class and I was at the same time learning about the slave trade in America. And I remember we had this heated debate in my politics class about why people need to be doing certain things like paying their taxes and voting and we have to have this and we have to have that you know just like the basics of being a, an American citizen and I remember standing up and being like look everybody calm the hell down let's look at it from a perspective like this just because slavery was legal back in the day does that mean you were going to do it 
would you have been involved in the Underground Railroad freeing slaves because you knew that was the right thing to do even when that was illegal at the time? The Underground Railroad was illegal even though it was the right thing to do. And it kind of tore the class up because <laughs> a healthy majority of us were like, absolutely, I'd participate in the Underground Railroad, fuck slavery. And the other half was like, well, just because it's like a legal practice doesn't mean I have to participate, but I also don't have to do this illegal practice. And that to me gutted me. Like there were legitimately people I would not talk to after that day because I'm like, you and I have very different moral compasses and I don't want to be on the ship with you because you, I don't like where your moral compass guides you. you. You would get us stranded out to sea because you're too much of a coward to say we need to go north. You know what I mean? So that kind of geared me up for the rest of my life. That, that happened, I think, when I was 15 or 16 years old. That geared me for the rest of my life to be like, okay, there are certain people who will allow shit things to happen because they don't have the courage to stand up and do something different. And then there's a group like me who's like, nah, fuck this shit we're going to create an underground railroad. We're going to do something that does the right thing regardless of what ends up happening to us. I have a martyr spirit in that I will absolutely stand up for the right cause. If it gets me killed, I don't give a fuck. I will burn at the stake for the right to practice witchcraft. You know what I mean? Like, I don't fucking care. And that can come off like Maybe I'm being guided by a devil or maybe something dark is pulling me forward, but really it's not. It's me recognizing the devil is the one guiding other people to do horrible things. And I'm like walking that edge of just because this is a safe space doesn't mean I have to stand there. What happens if I fall off this space? Everything could be totally fine. There could be another big ass floaty rock underneath this that nobody else is recognizing. So I get that for you is that you also understand unity consciousness. It's been on your mind heavily and you're trying to find a way to walk that edge and find that balance in your existing life. And part of that is practicing some sort of passionate ownership of your femininity because you recognize and you see things that most people do not see or recognize. And you you appreciate that. This inner star glowing there is this bright orangish yellow. Same with all this bright orangish yellow. You see the truth of what reality is. You're able to look over at this guy and be like, nah, son, I got this. I'm good. She doesn't fall victim to the devil. She's like, I got all my shit on lock. I don't need your help. I'm good. And that's kind of what this is, is this come to the edge is this guy's asking you to step forward towards civilization. It's almost like um, spiritual warfare. It's like your mind is picking up on the reality of earth but there's this lingering energy of like, are you sure you don't want the newest iPhone? And you're like, no, nah, I'm good with my iPhone, whatever. Like, I'm fine. I have everything I need. I'm actually really passionately happy and I feel turned on by the truth of reality. And then you go into this double mission space. And I love this because there's the moon and the earth, right? So duo. And then you have the woman and the womb, duo. So you have a, a two-sided mission and it's both cosmic and earthbound. You have the light worker seed, star seed, which is her knowledge that she's like up in the cosmos. And then you have the serve the world by being you, where she's literally serving the world just by being the nurturing mother that she is. And you know, my chan channel handle for YouTube is the Stardust Godmama. That's kind of where I resonate is that I'm a godmother to all of you. I'm not your birth mom and we're not like you know, family, family, but I perceive everybody as like a godparent. I want you to succeed. I want to have your back. And if you feel abandoned in this world, because whatever X, Y, Z reason with your parents, I got you, boo. And then you have reward yourself. And again, like I said, just treating yourself to trusting the path that you're on is sturdy. And you're just waiting. You're just patiently waiting for things to work out for you, but you've put in the hard work and now it's time to reward yourself with a break. All right. Let's get four more cards to define and clarify this spread. Please, Spirit, four more cards for pile number three to clarify this spread. Whenever you are ready, Spirit, I am ready for you, my spirit babies. How fast do you need? Ooh, we have the three of cups. Family, friends, joy, abundance. So this coming to the edge space where you're experiencing the devil, it might feel a little bit isolating because that's the initial concept right you feel a little isolated and you feel like you've got this darkness in your head that's like don't do it don't do it don't do it but you also have people around you 
possibly even just two people around you who trust you and believe in you and want to see you succeed on this mission, whatever this is for you. That's really healthy. You're not alone. You might feel alone at times and you might feel like you have no one to talk to other than like the bad thoughts in your head and <laughs> knocking those down. But in reality, you have people around you who are super supportive and want to see you grow and succeed. Then you have the nine of swords, anxiety, worry, anxiety, worry. This is really interesting because this is a mind reading. Your shadow work is focused on your mentality, right? And so you're seeing the beyond and you relish in that. You trust that. But at the same time, it also is bringing you some anxiety. And I think if I could be so bold, the reason that is, is because you recognize that something's got to change, that what you're about to do, especially with the serve the world by being you card, what you're about to do is step up as a mother of love to the world. And that comes with a lot of anxiety, a lot of anxiety, right? Because how do you serve everyone and no one? How do you be right for the collective and also not at all because it's not your place to tell people what to do, right? So it's on your mind a lot. You, I love that the mind came out for this reading and you got the nine of swords. It's clearly keeping you up at night that you're not quite sure how to go about doing any of this. And you're not quite sure if it's your place to do any of this. And you might feel a little crazy. That's this devil card coming in. Look at that. There's a shadowy figure that's got two hands on his head just holding his temples. And then there's this woman with a hand on her head holding her temple. You're in this space of like, man, I don't know if I'm crazy or not. I don't know if, you know what it feels like? Those blips, those like flashes of light before you hit enlightenment. I have this tattoo I'll share with you because this is what this is about. Um, it's an unalome and it's a lotus. This one, this little dot here is birth. And then you have the path of enlightenment. And then you go on that path. And then you have these two dots here that are like blink, blink, right before you hit the lotus flower of enlightenment. And then this little dot is death, of course. But right before you hit that enlightenment phase where you actually get it and you're in tune with consciousness, you're in that space of anxiety because it comes on and you're like, oh my God, nirvana. And then it goes away and you're like, wait, Am I crazy? Did I really see that? It's like if you feel like you've seen aliens or UFOs before, probably more UFOs than aliens. But if you've seen UFOs before, you're like, whoa, what the fuck is that? And then it kind of disappears and you're like, did I really just see that? Was that a satellite? Like, what the fuck was that? Your next card is the King of Wands, Honor, Standards, Wisdom, Motivation. This is fabulous because you need to have masculine energy with your feminine energy. Otherwise, you don't move forward with the things you know you're supposed to do. And whatever this double mission is that you're on, it weighs heavily on your mind. Because even though we are one consciousness, you feel inspired to be someone who leads forward and to, helps, to help guide people into this new earth phase. And you can't really do that if you don't have the diligence and the discipline to follow through on it, that motivation. So you're, you need to look at your standards, right? You need to look at what you what wisdom you have that sticks by your honor code that you want to bring forward into the world and educate people on and then set a standards bar for what that looks like that way while you're expressing your creativity in this in this empress space while you're holding space as a mother for the world you can actively show up and do the work oh my god and then we have the empress twice honey honey you are mother to the world right now. And you know that you are carrying the weight of so much work that you've done and it's been on your mind. And you're probably in the space of like, am I really good enough to do this? Am I really in the space where I can actively do this? Do I know enough? Have I been through enough? Can I hold enough space? And this is confirmation, the emperor is twice in this reading. Hell yes, you can. You are meant for this. But part of this, I love the words on this. It's luxury, beauty, harmony, abundance, grace, fertility, love, nature, beauty, art. Beauty is on here twice. And what did we say about rewarding yourself? What did I say? If you loved Manny Petties as a kid, go get one. If you didn't, then do the other things that you loved as a kid. I think some of you here loved Manny Petties as a kid or you loved the whole pampering yourself, tea parties and whatever, fake spa days with mom and dad or whatever. And so that's what you need to be doing. You need to be like, this is a twofold though, right? There's the people who love pampering with Manny Petties. And then there's the ones like me who were like tomboys who just loved running around the neighborhood and being ridiculous and covering themselves in sand. Either way, you're supposed to do what makes you feel just absolutely abundantly into your feminine side pursue that oh my god that is so cute you got the empress twice. we we got the empress twice i love this 
that just means to me that whatever is on your mind that's plaguing you and giving you anxiety, your way out of it is going to be pleasure-based. Stop overthinking it. Stop getting caught up in the diligent side of it because that's, that's the toxic masculinity that we see in the devil. That's not what's really happening. That's just where your brain is reverting because survival instincts, right? So don't overthink that. Get out of that space and get back to a place where you creatively enjoy what you're doing. And since you... You're already doing it, whatever it is, by the way. If this is a new business, like for me it is, you're already doing it. So right now, this reading is your shadow work for the mind is to treat yourself, reward yourself, have fun, get playful. Really reward yourself for all the stuff you've done. You've overcome so much anxiety and stress. And now is the time to reward yourself for that because you've got good things coming to you. So let's round this reading out with four more cards for... Ah! For what happens after the fact, I'm using the after tarot. So anything that happens after the fact, if you take this feedback and run with it, what is your reward if you take this feedback and run with it? Whenever you are ready, spirit, I am ready to receive your message. My feisty unicorn. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is beautiful. Right off the bat, what happens when you embrace all this and reward yourself, treat yourself and start healing your mind from this anxiety, well, you're going to start giving yourself some hugs. There's some depression that lingers. There's some self-worth that lingers. You've been trying to save too many people and you've got regrets over things that have happened in the past. And so when you really start healing these parts of yourself, you're going to recognize a lot of that rhetoric has been this devil playing on your mind. It's not real. And you're going to start soothing that part of your mind that is stuck with these emotions because your, your emotions directly impact your mind, right? And vice versa. So your mind has been heavily bogged down from this detachment mindset and this, the one mindset, unity consciousness is going to pull you back to recognizing like, hey, things have happened, but I'm all right. Anything that's happened to me has happened for me and with me. And it all serves to help me and to help the other person that was involved with it. I'm okay. I got this. I'm going to pick myself up, give myself a hug, and move forward. We're good here. Oh, then you have the King of Swords. This popped up in pile number two. So maybe you resonate with that as well. <laughs> and want to go watch that pile. Excuse me. But once you start taking this on and you really work through those anxieties and those worries and you really come to a space where you trust your inner knowledge and you fire yourself up for it, you're then going to start diligently doing the work with zero emotional attachment. The King of Swords is not an emotional guy. He's pretty much like if he knows yoga is the thing to do every day, he's just going to do it and he's not going to be emotionally caught up about it. If he knows that, you know, praying every morning, every night is the way to go, he's just going to do it. And he's not going to think twice about it. So you go from the space of being anxious and having worries because you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and you have to be a god mama to everybody. You go from being worried about it to being like, oh, peace, calm. I've I've had a good cry, I've come to terms, and I've released and let go of these things that I feel guilty for, that I feel like I'm not good enough for, and now I can step forward with the diligence of knowing this is what I'm supposed to do. And then you have the Four of Pentacles. Now, this means that there is going to be some lack for a while. This guy goes from having stability under his feet and at his core to having one pentacle on his head that looks like it's going to be swiped off by death in a heartbeat. So you are going to experience some frugality while you work through this. And I imagine that's because you're going to start pursuing something that makes you take a step back and not do traditional work, but to focus on whatever passionpreneurship endeavors you have in mind. Because again, you've been putting in the work for something. Even, and it's probably not paying out right now. If you're anything like me, I haven't made a dime off of anything I'm doing right now, but I know that it's what I'm supposed to be doing. So you're probably going to go, you're going to shift into a space of frugality and that's okay. It's not a bad place to be, especially if you are low on money right now. So it's totally fine. Oh, oh, you have a duo, the king and queen of swords. Now you have the queen of swords and look with her little butterfly on top of her, her sword. Butterflies are big for transformation. So you go into rewarding yourself and treating yourself and lining up with your inner empress and really just enjoying the space that you're at right now. And look at her. She thoroughly enjoys where she's at right now. She holds her sword with confidence and grace. And she's just looking up at this butterfly like, oh, what a beautiful synchronicity for me. I have transformed so much in my life. And I'm so happy to see said butterfly just hanging out with me right now. This is great. So pile number threes, 
you and me are on a journey. We see beyond reality and we understand that we have work to do here on this plane. And right now it's all about figuring out how to merge our mindset with the work we know we're supposed to be doing. You and I are supposed to be leaders on this planet in consciousness, leaders in consciousness. That's what I'm getting is that we, we see things and perceive things before the rest of the world does. And we've been actively doing the work to create something in this reality that has us treading the line and stepping outside and walking the edge of what humanity considers to be the status quo. And it's been exhausting, not gonna lie. And I think that's what this reward yourself is all about is, hey, you've put in the work, treat yourself. Do something that really connects you to your inner child and just let yourself be for a minute because that was a lot to go through. And it's time to just take a deep breath and treat yourself to some, some good things. And when we do start treating ourselves, we work through that anxiety. We get back to a place of healthy creativity, disciplined masculinity. And then we start really seeing that through this work, we have this balance of, I know what I need to do. I'm happy to be doing it, even if I'm experiencing frugality. If you're too stressed while you're dealing with this, you're not going to be able to sit in that frugal moment. And sometimes frugality is what we need to experience before we get that big monetary payout. All right, pile number threes, I hope this resonated with you today. If there's anything I said or did or anything you experienced that really resonated with you on a synchronistic level, please leave it in the comments below so that we can all enjoy the beautiful magnificence that is spiritual connectivity. Until next time, my friends, love and bear hugs. Hello there, pile number four. Welcome to your reading. You chose the judge. Ah. All right, like I said, I'm one of those readers who doesn't read the cards, so take that for what it is, let's see what the two things, two things are that Spirit wants to talk to you about today. Ooh, love. I love that. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and soul. Oh, interesting. Love and soul. Eh, it's such you right there. Yeah, that'll work. All right, let's get down to it. Let's see what Spirit wants to discuss. We've got thinker. Number 44. Then we have let it go. Okay, okay. Earthed, learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. Okay. Life purpose. The purpose of your life is to serve in a way that brings great joy to yourself and others. Don't worry about finding your purpose. Instead, focus on upon serving a purpose, and then your purpose will serve you. Interesting. I feel like that really resonates with learning how to be human in the world, but not of it interesting you're supposed to learn more for a life purpose and I love how bright yellow that is with soul I think what's been on your mind is that you need to let go of the way that you've been experiencing love with your with your purpose your life purpose your soul feels inspired to do something but you are kind of, as much as you love it, you're not quite sure how to go about being it, being the love that you see, being the love you want to see in the world. And so part of your shadow work right now is really just allowing yourself to judge what does and does not work for you, what is or is not resonant with you. That's part of the life purpose. Don't worry about finding it. Instead, focus on serving a purpose, and then your purpose will serve you. I think you're not in love with your life right now. You're thinking things through, and there's something you need to let go. And you really need to trust where your soul is guiding you. Interesting. Interesting. So let's get, let's get some more. Um, six of Pentacles, Reciprocity. Then we have Two of Pentacles, starting fresh with this material concept of how to exist in the world Ooh, then we have the tower learning to be human in the world but not of it and then we have eight of pentacles doing the hard work in the material so this is a lot of pentacle energy obviously three out of the four cards well this is a challenge pile number four because you've got love and soul coming through as what your shadow work is right now and I get the impression because there are two hands here, right? In the judge card, two hands and then two, like one's a skull and then one's like an eye, a creepy little eye, this yellow bit. And so it feels like 
you, your soul is feeling one thing and the way you perceive love is a completely different thing. And all of this is showing up in your material world. Pentacles deal with the material realm. They can also deal with finances and stuff, but I'm not saying that this is about finances. I'm saying that this is about the material world you have around you, that you're thinking about the way you give and take like materially. So with love, I see that as like your relationships. You're thinking about how you give and take in relationships and how others give and take with you. There's got to be this reciprocity. Right now, a hand is out that's receiving and another hand is out that is giving. I'm not sure which one you are, but I would imagine you're the one who's giving. You're more considerate of how you give because that's the hand that's on top, right? If this was if this was flipped around like that, I would think that you are more concerned about how you receive. But this seems to be more like you're concerned, you're thinking, not concerned necessarily, but you're thinking more about how you give and what people give back to you. And your soul and your, your concept of love seem to be split. And that's where you need to let something go. You've got two concepts here. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at this. The love is in red and the soul is in yellow. Red, yellow. Fascinating. I know, I know it's like kind of orangey, but that's what the soul one is too. It's got orange text with yellow in the background. And this one's just got red and then pink, right? So that's what you've got here. You've got this red and pink and this yellow and orange. So yeah, it seems like let it go. And it's a heart. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so here's another thought that's coming to me. This is a challenging reading, you guys, because I'm getting a lot of things coming through at once. But one of the things I tell people is that your soul and your intellect are intertwined, right? So if you were raised a certain way, pragmatically, like if you were raised Mormon, your soul falls in line with that, your mind falls in line with that. If you were raised in a family that's very conflicted on spirituality, then your mind's going to be conflicted on spirituality. So what I'm getting here is that that's kind of the disconnect we're having is that your soul was taught a certain way of how to be, but your heart, your mind, your heart believes a different thing. Your soul is attached to your mind, right? So you were pragmatically taught, this is how we do things, but your heart is guiding you in a different direction. And you're not quite sure how to merge those two things. You're in a state of judging it right now and looking at it like, I don't really understand. But what I do know is that I am starting over. I, I feel like I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. And she's in that same sitting lotus position that this life purpose guy is. And she's working the eight of pentacles. Like you're really trying to figure something out right now in your life. And it could be related to work. It could be like, I don't like the way I've been giving and receiving financially. But overall, if that is the case, it's because it comes from this place of like, you are having an awakening in your heart space and it's asking you to let go of whatever spiritual construct you had for yourself. This might be a spiritual awakening for you, pile number four. Like this might be one of the first tarot readings you've ever watched on YouTube kind of thing and you're just like mind blown right now because, and it probably isn't for the majority of you, but if it is for any of you, it's because you're just now starting to wake up to the concept that your life is not what you thought it would be. You were raised to believe a certain thing would be for your existence and it's not. And your heart is really struggling here because your soul, it's like, it, look at it like this. It's because this is the only way I know how to describe it for whatever reason. It's as if you were raised religious. Like, let's say you were Catholic. So your soul, your mind, Catholic but your heart is suddenly resonating with like Buddhism and only Buddhism or something. And so you're, you're like, well, shit, I don't know how to exist in this realm where like karma is a thing and everybody is good even through their badness and there isn't a heaven and hell. There's just the concept of unity, consciousness and like all this stuff. Like it's a huge conflict between what you were raised to believe and what you are now having this expansion of your heart space for. And that expansion in your heart space is asking you to let go of these things you were taught in the material world. You were taught 
in the material world, you actively were taken to a Catholic church. You were maybe in the choir. You maybe were married in a Catholic church. Like you've been doing all the things in the physical plane to root this concept, but then you have this heart expansion that's like, whoa, maybe it's this other thing. And now you're having this tower moment because you've just realized I might be human, but I'm not from here. My soul is from beyond. Like this kind of resonates with someone who just did like an ayahuasca retreat or something. And you're just like, holy shit, what is life? And now you're like, wow. And so you're looking to find purpose in that. You're looking to understand like, well, why am I here? Who am I? What am I supposed to do with my life? And it's kind of like, don't really focus on that. Focus on serving a purpose. If you if that purpose is I want to explore unity consciousness, focus on just learning about that and serving that and posting on Instagram about it or whatever you feel called to do, doing writing, whatever. And it'll somehow come together. Through doing the work in the material plane, the physical plane, it'll come together. This is an interesting reading, pile number four. I really wish I had picked this pile because this is so freaking fascinating. Um, let's get four more cards to clarify, pile number four. You're in a very, your shadow work is interesting. You are having an awakening. That's what I'm hearing. You've, you've learned something about the difference between what your spirit feels called to and what your heart feels called to. You love something, but your soul was, and it could be vice versa. It could be that your concept of love has been altered because your soul has awakened. Actually, yeah, I want to take some time to say that too, because I started off this reading saying, you know, your soul was raised a certain way and now your heart is expanding in this other way. But now that I see the heart with the let it go, I'm thinking your heart has been raised a certain way and now your soul awakened. Your heart and your mind were told Catholicism as an example. This isn't for everybody, but as an example. And your soul had a spiritual awakening in, let's say, <laughs> an ayahuasca retreat. And now you're being told to let go of the one dynamic, the, 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 one dimensional Catholicism route and to accept the multifaceted kaleidoscope of unity consciousness. That feels more aligned. I wish I had said it that way the first, I think the way I said it the first time was meant for someone. Obviously there are no coincidences. There's only synchronicity. So it is for whoever it is, but um, this actually feels like the better way to say it. You were taught one way to love and then something happened and now you're like, oh shit. This is actually like, there's a lot more to take on here than just like the human experience. And now that has pushed you towards a life purpose where you want to start talking about it. You want to start experiencing it more in the physical plane. And you're just not sure how to reap purpose from it. And that's kind of the funny thing about purpose, right? We're often raised to believe we have to do something that gives a purpose, but really your your existence alone and allowing yourself to be your most creative abundant self is purpose enough we don't you don't have to produce anything but because there's so many pentacles here i do see that you want to bring this into the material world you do want to find a way to make this your life and you're struggling with that but that's because right now the shadow work is really just judging how you feel between your love and your soul between what you grew up knowing and what you now know is different that's the dichotomy here is there's this there's this way of being and thinking that you grew up with. And now there's this new reality that is earth shattering, like, whoa, foundation rocking, groundbreaking. And it's completely shifting how you perceive existing in your reality as you know it. All right, let's get four more cards to clarify this pile. Whoa, pile number four. You are interesting. You are by far the most interesting of all four piles in this reading. Your shadow work is big everybody's shadow work is big but yours is like yours is groundbreaking yours, yours is gonna you're just gonna fuck shit up if you take it on this is nuts this is interesting all right four more cards to clarify this spread please and thank you spirit espirito espiritas my spirit babies my spirit babies is that the winner no ah ah give it to me easy Easy piece of lemon squeezy. There we go. All right. So the hangman, if that's not the thinker, I don't know what is. <laughs> 
you're really caught in this place where it's waiting, rebirth, sacrifice, reflection. And I think rebirth is part of it. You are really reflecting right now on what you've just learned. You've learned something and it's changed the way that you are judging your reality. You're now perceiving things differently and you're in this rebirth phase where you're not really doing anything about it. You're waiting for something to click, it seems like. And you've had to sacrifice your old ways to your new ways. So you're just really stuck in a space of reflection. Oh, and then you have the nine of swords. I love this because it's the same kind of position. She's got one, the same arm kind of elbowed out and then the same arm on her head. So this is causing some anxiety for you. What you're supposed to be letting go is a mental hurdle for sure. Even though this is love and soul ultimately guiding your shadow work reading, it comes down to your mindset. So that tells me that it's more of a soul. Your soul, come here you. Your soul was raised a certain way and that's what you have to let go. So even though the heart one resonated with me more in the pragmatic sense, the, the message sense of it, it's actually that your soul, uh, because I think the soul and the mind are interconnected, right? If you were raised Catholic, your mind follows those kind of morals. And then if you switch that, that's what the struggle is. So your mind, your soul was taught a certain thing and then your heart expanded and now you're being told to let that go and to perceive something bigger and more beyond that. And it's causing a lot of anxiety in the physical plane. Then you have the two of wands, plans, partnership, influence. As far as for earthed, learning how to be human in the world, but not of it and having a huge tower moment that this just shakes your reality completely. I'm seeing that you are trying to find a way to merge the gap between love and soul. And this might come down to a partnership. There might be a specific person you're dealing with now, family, romantic, friendship, whatever, that is influencing how you are taking this on. And I love that she's got the flames there because there are flames in this one as well caused by the lightning bolts. So you've got these two wands that are lit up now. It's like, I know what I love and I know what my soul is. And now I'm just trying to like move forward with this knowledge into the world. Woo. And then we have the hermit. Healing, solitude, inner work. This is perfect for the life purpose card because he kind of looks like a hermit anyways, right? And it's perfect for this eight of pentacles because she is doing the inner work. It's physical work also. She's at a desk and she's like doing it. But for all you know, she's sitting there writing philosophy and theoretics and really analyzing where her thought process is. So this is perfect for you. You are in a space right now where you are reflecting back on all of this and you're like, okay, what do I do with that information? This isn't for everybody, obviously, but I really feel like pile number four, you probably went through some sort of mad awakening, very similar to a drug-induced trip. Like maybe you did hypnosis, maybe you did do ayahuasca, but you went through something that just like, and it could be like a near-death experience even. You went through something that opened your freaking mind and you're like, shit, shit, now I gotta look back and like piece this together. How do I, and you, it could be something like, you were raised never to believe in aliens, but then one day you saw a UFO and you're like, oh my God, what? <laughs> and now you have to piece together how that makes any sense in the realm of reality that you've formerly been familiar with. So you're reflecting back, something big happened to you that has put you in a state of shadow work for the way you perceive love and spirit. This is fascinating. So if you take on whatever this feedback is, because I'm not really sure that there's advice here outside of don't try to translate this into a purpose. Don't try to translate this into something you do about it. Translate all this experience as I'm just going to learn more. And through that education and sharing what you're learning, purpose will come from it. You, you, you're currently in a space where you don't understand why this happened to you. And it's bringing you anxiety because you're like, shit, this just like transforms the entire way I perceive my reality. And that is groundbreaking and earth shattering and like that's a nightmare, right? When your whole reality gets flipped upside down, that's like spiritual divorce. It's like, dear Lord, what do I do now? So I can get why that is a bit of a nightmare for you. And I can see why you're probably reflecting on it. Like, how can I make this something of value in my life? But right now, the advice is just enjoy the process. Learn, 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 learn as much as you can about being a spirit in a physical vessel. And eventually it will work itself out. So if you take this feedback and you move forward with it, what is going to happen after the fact? I'm using the after tarot for these next four cards. This will be the end of your reading. What comes after the fact if you take on this spiritual insight, this advice, and you start 
educating yourself, doing the research and figuring out how you can translate this into some sense of stability and purpose for yourself. Because I do see that you want to you want to make this make sense. Whatever this experience was, purpose, not even like, oh, I need to find the purpose of my existence, why I'm even here, but like, what was the purpose of that kind of thing? Um, so let's see what that is. You're going to do some inner work. If you do the inner work, if you go within, isolate yourself for a bit, allow yourself this rebirth. What comes next? Whenever you're ready, my spirit team. There we go. Oh, well, there's going to be some reconciliation. There's going to be coming home to the self. In the traditional tarot deck, this is um, somebody giving flowers, a cup of flowers, that cup of flowers to um, the little girl, little woman. Um, but in this after tarot, I always take it as coming home to the self. You're going to come back to your truth. And that's a, that's a fantastic thing to see in that area. Then we have the king of cups. Oh, you're going to pour yourself out to the world. You're going to have this masculine healing that just pours your intuition back into spirit. The water is indicative of spiritual intuition, connectivity. And so you're pouring yourself back into yourself. It's a beautiful card to have there. Then you have the Queen of Swords. Wow, I shuffled this a lot and that card came out in the last reading as well, pile number pile number three. Um, but I love this for her because now the her here, the Two of Wands, you go from having like, okay, I have this love and I have this soul and I don't know what to do with it, where I'm going with it. I'd like to have a partner to help me with this flame while I start this new path because this tower is underneath this learning how to be human in the world, in the world, but not of it. And so it's kind of like your tower has been burned down and you're like, okay, I've got to rebuild who's coming with me. And she's learning, she's got this all on her own. She doesn't need anybody else to agree with her. She doesn't need anybody else to make sense of it. She's now willing and able to step forward on this new path of mental clarity. And that's really solid for this because whatever experience you've had Whatever is pushing you into this shadow work, it is something that came out of nowhere that blew your mind wide open and is completely transforming the way that you perceive reality and how to live and operate within reality. And so to feel comfortable in your space where you can masculine side dealing with your feelings, right? This is actually, let me just clarify this too. To have your masculine dealing with your emotions and your feminine dealing with your diligent pragmatic side is fantastic because your masculine side typically is the more analytical. So to deal with your emotions in a very calm, reserved, analytical way, like it's no big deal, pour it out, keep it moving. That's kind of what you want in this spiritual awakening moment. You don't want to be overly emotional about it. And then to have your feminine side, your creative, nurturing, nourished side dealing with the diligence of moving forward with it you want that as well because she's not going to take it on like all right let's just make a plan a b c d e she's going to go into it thinking okay here's how i go about doing this in a way that i love and nurture myself while i'm doing it right this is like the perfect caring parents combination for the inner self is the masculine who nurtures and loves you but doesn't overdo it with the emotions and the feminine who is creative and passionate and driven but doesn't overdo it with her discipline Oh my God, and then you have the star. YouTube's gonna hate them titties, but there it is. Then you have the star card. I'll just, just do, do a little bit of that. Then you have the star card at the very end of it. I love that you go from the hermit where you're isolated, solitude, inner healing, inner work, to the star where you're really getting deep with it and you're just trusting with spirit. You just, you connect to God and source in a way that is beyond like, this is really interesting. I think your shadow work has been some pretty massive cataclysmic spiritual awakening. And if you take this feedback, let everything go that you thought was and absorb this new knowledge that you've gained, you're going to get to a place of ultimate healing of your inner and outer realities coming home to yourself and really just trusting God and spirit and being in such a healthy place. Pile number four is, oh, yes, your shadow work is beautiful, lovelies. Your soul is on a journey right now. I love it. So pile number four, if there's anything I said or did or anything you experienced in this reading that truly resonated with you as a synchronistic click, hmm, click, there we go. <laughs> Please add it in the comments below so that we can all enjoy the beautiful magnificence that is spiritual connectivity. Until next time, my friends, love and bear hugs.